Hello, YouTube. Uh, I'm just waiting for my TikTok audience to turn up. Ooh, it's a little bit chilly tonight. Um, so if you're on YouTube, you can ask questions on there. But my, my main audience is on TikTok here. So and I look like I'm a talking head. I need some skin because it just doesn't look normal. Hi, Megan. I'm just saying. I look like a talking head if I just have all that. So I'm trying to show like, hey, wait a minute. I actually have a body attached to my head. Okay, so while we're waiting for people to turn up, I'd love to know uh, where you're from and the ages of your children. So this is my regularly scheduled live Tuesday night at 7 p.m. I also do it on YouTube. I'm going to actually, I'm getting more views on Instagram these days than TikTok. So I think I might um, start doing an Instagram live, uh, replacing one of these with um, an Instagram live. So we'll see how that goes. So um, I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm figuring all this out. Uh, 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 yeah. I've got some guidance because I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, anyway, Manitoba, ki two kids aged six and 10. My mother was from Winnipeg. She absolutely hated it because she was born during the depression and they had no heat. Imagine growing up in Winnipeg with no heat. <laughs> uh, they just, poverty, they just suffered during the depression and all that. So, but yeah, we, we visited there a lot. So I've spent a lot of time in Winnipeg. I remember biking in Winnipeg was really nice because it was all flat. Here in Vancouver, it's up and down and up. I mean, it's better exercise, but yeah, uh, it's a lot more hard. Okay, Louisiana, Louisiana. Is that how you say it? Louisiana. Two years old and eight month old. Oh, okay, you're, oh, you're right in the thick of it. It's temporary, they'll get easier. Or you might have really easy little ones. My, my kids were pretty easy, so. They just weren't born with a lot of, um, you live in Vancouver. Hi. Oh, I don't get a lot of people from Vancouver. I don't have any clients right now from Vancouver. Um, so, yeah. It's rough. Yeah, it would. It's physically, physically draining um, because you have to be on top of it. I have to be watching them all the time. Um, anyway, the child-proof your house is the best advice I can give you when you got little ones. Child-proof your house. It makes your life so much easier. Um, anyway, we'll just get going now. My name's Lisa. I'm a parenting coach. If you go on the link above, you've got everything up there that I've got to offer. You've got, uh, not in life, but in my business. <laughs> Why did that make me laugh? Anyway, crazy. Uh, okay, so you can hire me for coaching. It's all done on Zoom, so it doesn't matter where in the world you live. Or you can buy one of my courses. My boot camp is my big course that teaches you how to be a leader in five weeks. And I have three mini toddler courses. Um, they're really popular. I think that Potty training and the tantrum one especially are really popular. Um, and then also my free behavior board that's completely free. It starts at the age of three. Um, I've been doing a lot of tantrum videos right now. And I, I said I, I don't like to talk about just tantrums all the time. But I've been going through all my comments lately and tantrum, tantrum, tantrum. Everyone wants to know about tantrums. So that's why I've been on a bit of a tantrum binge lately. Okay. Um, my two-year-old's biting when he's mad, his parents and himself. Yeah, they do that. They're crazy, right? So I do have a course, a little mini toddler course up in the link above, and it's Toddlers Who Bite and Hit. And it goes through that in great detail, but basically toddlers under the age of three, they're just about consistent, corrective actions. They're not about words because they learn through repetition. So every time they bite, you say no, and then you push them away or not, you know, shove them, but you know, you go like this, no, and then you walk away. So you put some distance between them and whatever they've just bitten um, or whoever they've just bitten or bit. Anyway, so yeah, it's consistent though. And try to stop them before they bite. When you see them going in for a bite, you do the same thing. Consistent when you say no, don't go on about it. Parents just get so tempted to do these mini therapy sessions. You know what hurts other people? You want to be nice? You're a good boy. You don't, oh, geez. Total waste of time. That's for you. That's not for your toddler at all. Just get it over and done with. I always say you deal with the bad behavior, but get it done with. And then you focus on the good kid. Deal with bad behavior, but focus on the good kid. Don't focus on all the bad stuff. Those mini therapy sessions are all about focusing on the negative. It's just garbage. Anyway, I know it's trendy right now. I get it. It's what I'm up against. It's great for my business because I get the parents who've been doing that for years and they realize it backfires. So it doesn't work. Okay, but I'd rather not. I'd rather it not be good for my business and I'd rather you guys find parenting easier. Okay. Six-year-old struggling with behavior at school, disruptive behavior diagnosed with ADHD. Yeah, ADHD is not a free ticket to be disrespectful at all. Uh, a lot of parents think that that's the reason, but all the kids I worked with had ADHD. It was very rare that I ever got a kid without it. I used to call them alphabet kids. They always had something after their name, ADHD, ODD, WXYZ. They were alphabet kids. 
So, and I never opened up one file. I dealt with the, with the kid, not the diagnosis. But yeah, that's everything I teach is all about ADHD or anything else they have. Uh, autism is different. Uh, that's in coaching only. Uh, that's, that's different. It's a specialty, and I only deal with that in coaching. But ADHD, that's all the kids I work with. No one ever said to me, here's an easy one, Lisa. <laughs> they always went, good luck with this one. <laughs> nice wig. Thank you. It's my natural hair. I don't color my hair or anything yet. I'm in my 60s. I haven't gone gray yet, which is good because um, I don't do anything with my hair. I would just go gray and probably look a lot older, but whatever. whatever. I don't care about all that stuff. Okay. What was I going to say about that? Oh, yeah. Check out my Brat Busters Boot Camp. Um, that is in the link above. That's a five-week course. teaches you how to set yourself up as a leader so that your kids respect you. Um, yeah. Do you know the more feisty the kid? And they almost always had ADHD or certainly ADD. Um, the feistier the kid, the more challenging they were, the quicker they were for me to get respect from. Do you know why? Because when they come up against a good leader, they usually have it. So if they come up against a really calm leader, they almost go like this. They go, oh, finally. Woo! Because they're craving it. They need it. They crave it. They want it. They All kids want a leader. They crave it. They want it. They need it. So if you're not a leader, when you're sending your kids out in the world and you're not a leader at home, because they take that with them, they take that leadership, it makes them feel safe and secure and their self-esteem is high. So they take that everywhere they go. When they get to be about three and a half to four, they just carry your leadership umbrella everywhere they go. Then they're not susceptible to peer pressure, bullying, the drug dealer on the corner, the internet, the Kardashians. They're just not vulnerable out there in the world. That's why you want to set yourself up as a leader. Bum, 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 bum. My 11-year-old is disrespectful. Check out that course, okay? And then you said, I'm looking into hiring you. Um, yeah, that's all above. Just, you know, do whatever you want. Um, whatever suits you. That course, a lot of people have doubled up. They do the course, and then they also do coaching at the same time. That actually makes my job a lot easier because we can get into a whole bunch of other stuff because you've already got all the basics written down. So, um, but yeah, people have, a lot of people have done that. I didn't expect that, but yeah, that's what's happened because that course is quite new. Okay, I have a toddler who's a runner. You just put a leash on them. Every time you go out and they can't run, like they can't go out, you know, every time you go out somewhere dangerous, then just put a leash on them. And then, But you just put the harness on them first. And then if they run, you say no, and you clip them in real quick. And you say no, you stay with me. And then you keep them clipped in for the rest of that outing. Is it going to be hell? Yep. But there's a lesson behind that. Behind every scene is a lesson. you got to be willing to go through the storm to get to the rainbow. Everyone wants the rainbow, but you got to be willing to go through the storm. Things with kids usually get worse before they get better because they're going to think, well, I remember when you gave in, you didn't know what you were doing. Now, all of a sudden, you want to take charge? Good luck with that. So they're going to push you harder, right? So that's why you have to stay as calm as possible. All I, I call my... my uh, style leadership parenting or calm leadership parenting when 99% of parenting should be just be fun and best friends and laughing all the time right but when you're disciplining that's when you calm right down my son used to say if my mom ever whispers run because that's what I'm disciplining I go didn't like that here's what we're gonna do so I got real quiet when I was disciplining and it's just a business transaction there are no emotions whatsoever involved in disciplining keep it like a business transaction get it over and done with and then just go back to being fun again so focus on the good kid, but deal with the bad behavior. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay. Yeah. By the way, Bob, if you've got an 11 year old who's disrespectful, you're just going to, you're, you're in the tweens right now, but boys tend to mature a little bit slower than girls, but you want to get that under control now before the teen years hit, because those are the most challenging. If you're not a leader, once you're a leader, I sail right through the teen years. My son even said to me once, he said, I could never rebel because you're too, you're too reasonable and easy to talk to. So I didn't, I didn't see that one coming. I didn't really <laughs> see that coming at all. But yeah, they, they can't rebel against a leader. They just don't. What, there's nothing to rebel against, right? And they'll tell you everything. So yeah, work on that because once you hit those teen years, it's more difficult. I don't have a course on teenagers. Uh, that's still just one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, it's all done on Zoom. Check it out if you're interested. Okay, so. Uh, toddler's favorite word is no. Why don't I have my TikTok up? I just did a video on that a few days ago. What to do and I'll, oh, how did I word it? I can't remember. I'm just going to look it up and then I'll tell you what was in it, but I'll just look it up because it would have been more, there would have been more in it. Uh, okay, just a second. Everything takes so long on the computer because I've got my YouTube live going on the, on the computer. I got so many screens here. It's unreal. 
Okay, what did I what did I call it as a video I just did? Okay, let's see here. I wasn't I didn't do a live yesterday. I missed it. I missed you guys. I love doing these lives. Okay, here it is. What about oh this was probably how many days ago? Maybe two, three days ago. Uh, and it's just looked through, it's probably the 10th video along. What about toddlers who's saying no to everything? You ignore that. If you say, hand me that toy and they say no, then you just take it. It's consistent corrective actions. You don't keep talking about it. It's the words that get you in trouble. It's all this explaining yourself, begging, repeating yourself. You look like a loser to them. They're like, you don't know what you're doing. But if you say, can you please give me that toy? And if they say no and they, they run, I would I would get that toy. I would just take it very quietly and put it away where they can see it, but they can't touch it. So yeah, take action. Um, they will eventually stop. And if they say no and there's no cons nothing going on, it doesn't matter. Just ignore it. Two-year-old slapping and biting. I have a whole course on that if you're interested. It's toddlers who hit and bite. It's in the link above if you're interested. It goes into that. It's the same thing. They're about consistent corrective actions. Every single time they do something, you're trying to correct consistent corrective actions. But just pick one behavior per week. I would deal with them all in one day, but I'm level 10 with what I teach. When you're learning how to do this, just pick one behavior that you want to correct. But you got to be consistent. If you do it right, if you nail it like nine times out of 10, you get it right, they're going to remember the one time you didn't. It's just the way kids are. I remember my son once, we had this conversation. He was laughing about all the dumb things I did, all the mistakes I made as a mother. Like, he just loved that. He thought it was so funny. And I did. It was funny. And then I said, yeah, but what about all the stuff I got right? And he was like, what? <laughs> they remember everything you did wrong because that's, that's funny for them, right? Because every time I did something wrong, I had to make amends to my kids. If I was late or something, I never yelled or anything, but if I was late, and because I hate it when people are late. It's a real pet peeve of mine. It's so disrespectful. So, but if I was late, my kids loved it because I'd be doing something for them, right? Like, oh, darn, what do you want? Okay, toddler doesn't clean up after asking, so put to bed, then screw. Yeah, that's a bit of a poop show going on there. You expect them to clean up after you ask them to do I wouldn't do that. What age is this? Like toddlers are under three. They're, to me, they're, a toddler is 16 to 35 months. So yeah, I wouldn't ask them to clean up and then you put them to bed. The, uh, yeah, it's just a poop show. So just keep watching. You'll see how it goes. Um, hmm. uh, my three and a half year old has to taste everything. He puts everything in his mouth, medicine, etc. Thoughts? Three and a half year old has to... I don't know. You'd have to hire me. I'd have to assess that. I get all sorts of stuff in coaching that I've like, there were, um, I usually, I always say I've heard it all, but this last year, um, I had something in 17 years of coaching I'd never had before. It wasn't horrible. It was just something out of the ordinary that I actually never heard of before. And it was like, Oh God, I just loved it. And this parents I was working with, Oh my God, they were just smart as a whip. They were great. So we figured stuff out, but it was, so it's very rare that I come against uh, up against something I haven't seen before, but yeah, I don't quite know what's going on there. Um, I have some ideas, but I don't, I don't want to guess without asking you questions first, because I would lead you down the wrong path potentially. So I don't want to go. If you want my help, you can hire me for coaching. That might just be one session if that's your only concern. Uh, okay. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. I'm also on YouTube. This is where I save these lives. And um, I'm trying to get more on YouTube. I'm uh, I'm up and running on, on Instagram. That's going re really well. TikTok is my base. This is my social media base because I got on here about a year and a half ago. And um, this is my biggest audience here. But I'm getting more views on Instagram, which I can't figure out. Uh, I don't understand that. I don't understand social media. Do you? <laughs> I can't figure it out. Uh. I'm like, why is that? I don't even try and figure it out. Okay. Two-year-old only acts up when dad is home from work. Uh, it could be excitement or it could be that dad's the pleaser. So dad's the one that lets him get away with it. Um, so I don't know. I don't, but you know, there are only two. Don't try and figure them out. I'm going to read you my top five tips for toddlers. Oh, I actually said it right. One of my viewers told me to name it that because I, I had it named something else and I was always stumbling. Okay, here's my top five tips for toddlers. Number one is childproof your home so you never have to say no. And this does apply to you, so it will make sense at the end. Number two is set up a toy rotation system so they're never bored. I just did a video on that yesterday. Number three is when you want to connect with your toddler and start setting yourself up as a leader, you do it through play. 
You connect with them in their world. You get down the floor and watch them play and you play, you mimic them. You play in their world. They're going to look at you differently. They're going to think, oh, they get me. You're just in their world. It's just, I've worked with hundreds of kids. I've just seen this. Okay. Like you don't connect with the three-year-old at the nail salon. You get down the floor, you go to the park, roll down the hill. That's the kind of stuff you do. Number four is stop with the mini therapy sessions. All this talk about stuff. They're not like that. They want to play. They want to have fun. And the mini therapy sessions are all for you. They were invented for the mom. They were not invented for the toddler. They're just feeding your own needs. Um, that's like, you know, you shouldn't have done that. And the reason oh God, it's just garbage. Number five, this is what, what sparked this. Stop trying to figure them out. They're not figure outable. Toddlers are crazy. It's not, well, it's not so much they're crazy. They just haven't formed any sanity yet. They're brand new, fresh human beings. Imagine if you've only been in the world for two years. And for one of those years, you were a potato laying on a mattress. Like, you know, they have no context yet. So don't try and figure them out. They're not figure outable. Whenever I have clients who have a toddler and an older child, they never even talk about the toddler. They just go, yeah, they're just toddlers. Like they don't question anything. So, yeah, they're just toddlers. So they get it. If, don't try and figure them out. Uh, Two-year-old throws tantrums. Yeah, I just did three tantrum videos today. Three of them. And I have a whole course on ta uh, tantrum busting if you're interested. You ignore tantrums, completely ignore them. The one that's, uh, I think, the most valuable is the swing story. It's my, what did I call it? Just a sec. I just did it like 10 minutes ago. It's called My Favorite Tantrum Story. Look that up. And at the end of this, I'll look that up. It explains tantrums. It explains how you deal with them and why. Yeah, it was a broad question for sure. Thank you. What, was that the tasting one? Because I didn't answer it because I couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. Could be something really, like I said, I have a few ideas. It's not something I haven't come up against. So, but the, but the reasons behind it are different. So there you go. I even give countdowns, <laughs> how to handle four and a half year old when he screams, no, one more minute. Anytime we need to go to bed, I even give countdowns. Yeah. I don't do any of that. So he's in charge basically. So yeah, set yourself up as a leader. How old is he? Four and a half. My course would be perfect for you. The um, Bratbusters Bootcamp. Check that out. It's up above. Sets you up as a leader. That stuff just doesn't happen. When you're a leader, they never challenge you. Why would they? Like my son, when he was 15, said, I could never rebel because you're too reasonable and easy to talk to. That was how I raised them. Like they never rebelled. Why would they? I was very reasonable and easy to talk. It was a safe place to land. And we had fun. We were friends. We had a blast. I miss it. I miss parenting. It was most fun. It was the most fun time my whole life. Just laughing all the time. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Do you have a video about toddlers biting? I'm sure I do. If you go Brat Busters biting, uh, you'll probably find it. Um, and I have a whole, I have a mini course on that if you're interested. Toddlers who bite and hit. Do I just physically pick them up? Wait a minute. It's so stressful. Yeah, I, that's, that's a big answer because you don't have respect. That's the one that's four and a half and he's screaming at bedtime. You got to set yourself up as a leader. It's not at four and a half. It's not just dealing with that bad behavior. It's setting you up as a leader. If you don't know how to be a leader, you can't just deal with the bad behavior. Because remember, we're never fixing kids. We're fixing and teaching parents. I'm a parenting coach. I'm not a kid coach. They already know how to be kids. Their behavior is 100% 100 a direct result of your parenting style. 100%. Their basic personality, their basic tendencies, they're born with. But their behavior is 100% a direct result of your parenting. So work on that. And that stuff just doesn't happen. Okay? It's a big picture thing is what I'm saying. you got to learn how to be a leader. Just keep watching. You can try my behavior board. That's completely free. Or you can buy my course. My boot camp is, is what that's designed for, teaching you how to be a leader. It's a five-week course. Okay. Four-year-old laughing hysterically at school, drop off and saying no. Okay, he doesn't have a leader. Again, you need to, if you're a leader, that does not happen. You can't just deal with these sporadic behaviors unless you work on your leadership skills. Work on your leadership skills. So yeah, again, that's the exact same thing. None of that would happen if you're a leader. They would be embarrassed to act like that because they look up, they want to please you. They, they like you, they, you're fun, and they want to please you. It would be like having a, a, a boss or a coach that you just love, a mentor that you just love and you look up to. Would you ever be rude to them? No. That's what, that's what I teach with parenting. It's leadership. They need, crave, and want a leader. If you're not a leader, they're going to be very vulnerable out there in the world. Very vulnerable. They're very susceptible to bullying, peer pressure, 
the drug dealer on the corner, the internet, the Kardashians, they're very vulnerable out there in the world. You want to be a leader and they will tell you everything right through the teen years. I specialize in, in teenagers. I started my business doing teen crisis work. So I know how to get you through those teen years. I'm always working backwards. My goal is to get you through the teen years, but I work backwards. I'm building all the, the I'm building all of your skills to get you through those teen years. Okay. And he's still little, Stephanie. Like, he's only four and a half, right? He's still, he's just a tiny little guy, okay? Very doable. It's tougher when people hire me with, if they've got a 16, especially 16, 17, 18. That's harder. Uh, under 16, it's easier. General, I'm generalizing, but just from all the clients I've worked with over the years. Um, 16, 17, 18 is tougher. But you work on the connection with teenagers, and then other stuff gets a little bit easier. But, yeah. Oops. Lack of self-esteem is an epidemic because that's because parents are not leaders. When you're a leader, their self-esteem skyrockets because you're guiding them into making good choices. They're proud of how they act and how they treat people. And everyone's telling them how great they are and how nice they are. Their self-esteem skyrockets because you're a good leader. Um, years ago, I first saw the please your parent style is what I talk about all the time. It's what I'm up against. It's the style right now. Um, it's all this rolling out the red carpet participation awards because my precious little angel needs to get an award. Even if he doesn't turn up to the game, he still should get a participation award. Even if he hasn't participated, like I've watched all this happening. And I remember saying 30 years ago, I don't know, I worded it differently, but what I was saying basically was they're raising self-entitled snowflakes with mental health issues. And I said, there's going to be a drug epidemic and a mental and a depression, uh, depression epidemic. Um, I just saw it coming. There's no leadership. They're absolutely lost. They're forlorn. They're, they don't know who they are. Um, yeah, it's just awful. It's like, uh, you didn't validate my feelings. I'm just a bus driver lady. Like, you know, they're just so, they're lost. It's just tragic, really. And teachers are a huge portion of my clients are teachers because they, they're learners. It's not that they're struggling more. They just want to perfect it, right? So, and also child psychologists. It's not that they're struggling any more than anyone else, but I get a lot of them because they want to perfect it. They identify, I've got experience, right? They mean I couldn't do their job, but they identify I've got that experience base, right? But anyway, and I've said this, please your parent style that's out right now. It's so trendy right now. It's all about trying to roll out the red carpet, make life easy. You're always trying to go in and save the day. Parents will even say to me, how do we make chores fun? Why on earth would you want to make chores fun? You're teaching them that everything should be fun. They should never, you know, like I was praying to God and my kids are 15. I made them go out and get jobs. And I said, I pray to God you're going to have to scrub a public toilet at least once. I wanted them to learn toughness, like to learn to be good hard workers. And they were proud of themselves, not so much for scrubbing the toilet, but you get the idea. It wasn't their job, but they both had to do it in their jobs at least once. So, um, but anyway, you want to build strong young people. That's what you want to do. You want to build strength, fortitude, and that they're willing to help others, not just expecting everything to be about them. The old fashioned style was the authority, not a bad way to parent compared to what's happening these days. It, it, I don't do that. The authority is the my way or the highway. I know what I'm doing. They raise rebellious teenagers, but the teenagers come out the other end and they're still strong and they're resilient and they respect their parents for what they did for them. The leader, they don't, re they don't rebel. Um, you're friends with them and they don't rebel. So it's an easier way to go. The pleaser parent, you're, they treat you like a dish rag. They wipe their feet on you. They never respect you, even as adults. They're still asking for money and everything. You know, they're just, it's just a disaster. Yes, I'm exaggerating, but I'm getting my point across. So, because I have to fix this stuff up in coaching all the time, because people tell, I don't, I've never studied what's out there. I never, look, I don't know anyone else who's teaching parenting. I stay in my lane. I'm very careful about that. I'm kid taught. I've never read a book on parenting or kids. Nothing. I stay in my lane. Kids taught me all this. And then my clients, working with clients for 17 years. This is how I honed all this stuff. But yeah, lack of self-leadership is an epidemic. Absolutely. Because they didn't have a leader. How can they be? How can they be disciplined, have self-discipline if they were never disciplined, never guided along the right path? Oh, I go on rants. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to look on YouTube now. Hi, I need help with my 13-year-old. She's out of control. This started in seventh grade. Yeah, seventh and eighth grade is when it usually ki really kicks in. Um, if you want my help, teenagers are all coaching. One-on-one, -on -one, it's on Zoom. If you want my help, I usually recommend five sessions with teenagers. 
And then Paula said, what to do when a three-year-old doesn't help clean up toys? You got to set up expectations with three-year-olds. And, and also I had a toy rotation system. So my, um, my place was, I was kind of, I'm really fussy. I'm very organized. I had very few toys at any given time. My kids had three chores every single day when they were three years old, starting at three, make their bed, put their laundry away and clean up all their toys. Now I had maybe five toys out. So, and I had open shelves. I like everything to be displayed. So there was a place for everything, everything in its place. So, at the end of the day, I'd say, let's watch TV as soon as you've done your chores. And they'd run around doing them. It would take them two minutes to do all this, you know, throw their bed covers up. And then there was, I did laundry every day and there was always an empty hanger and an empty spot where something needed to be folded in. So they knew exactly where everything went. So set up a system so it's easy for them to do. Put a follow chore chart on the behavior board. That's free in the link above the, the behavior board and write down the rule is follow chore chart and then write down three little chores that you want them to do, but make it doable and easy. Don't have a big cluttered home. I hate toy rooms. I really hate play rooms. And I've uh, got a couple reasons for that, but anyway, uh, so if they've got a cluttered playroom, you can't expect them to clean that up. That's ludicrous. So yeah, just have, make it easy for them, make it doable. And that's up to you to set up the systems. Um, the reason I hate playrooms so much is I wanted my kids around me. I didn't want them in another room. And I don't like clutter. I don't like too much stimulation with all these toys. They never play with anything. They don't learn how to focus because they got too much going on. And But I wanted them with me. I didn't want them off in another room. So, yeah, whenever people build playrooms, they'll even build them on different levels. I'm like, yuck. Like I, I always thought that was yucky. When they get older, like I had a rec room. Uh, when they were older, like teenagers, that's different. But when they're little, I wanted them around me. Teenagers don't want to be hanging around you with their friends. Even though I tried to be hip and cool, I was still mum, right? <laughs> uh, I need to hear you. I've tried everything and nothing's worked. Keep watching. I'm just common sense based. I've been working with kids for 51 years now. So I've learned a few things over the years. And I always dealt with difficult kids, uh, the challenging ones. I know No one ever handed me an easy kid to work with. Not once, not ever. Okay. I've been doing the behavior board with my three-year-old son when he takes away toys from my youngest. Perfect. And then the youngest one gets to play with his favorite toy for 10 minutes or something. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. The behavior board is completely free above. Coaching is not free. And in the middle, you've got some courses. So the big courses, the boot, uh, boot busters. I always say that wrong. Boot, I always want to say boot camp, boot busters. It's Brat Busters Boot Camp. And it's, a, it's from three to 12 year olds. And it's a five week course sets you up as a leader. It's all about you. We're teaching parenting here, not kidding. They already know how to kid, how to be kids. We're teaching you how to be a leader. Um, and once you get this, getting it is hard. Earning respect is hard. Maintaining it's a piece of cake. So setting yourself up as a leader, it's hard work. Put in five weeks, see how it goes. You'll see a difference at the end. Um, so yeah, it's only five weeks. You got those kids for 18 years. What's five weeks, right? Even that behavior board, that's completely free. Do that for three weeks. It's set out so that you could do that for three weeks. You do one behavior board per week, only three of them. And see how you go. Oh, here we go. I tell him to give his brother his favorite toy, but this is when the, you've got the three-year-old who's taking toys away or using the behavior board. I tell him to give his brother his favorite toy, but he takes it away. Well, no, you got to be in there. you got to be in there like a dirty shirt. You're right there for those 10 minutes. And you say to the little one, you say, okay, he gets one of your favorite toys. You don't get him to give it to him. That's asking too much. It's like as if he's going to hand it over on a pillow, right? You just say, okay, that's the toy. You want to play with that? You ask the little one. What do you want to play with? Okay, let's do that. And then you keep the bigger one away. It's going to be hell, but it's worth it. Every client that I that has done this with me, when I'm coaching, they say, it's a good one. It's a really good one. But you're right in there with them. That's why I just make it 10, 15 minutes, whatever. I'm on week one. Perfect. Okay, week one. Is that the course or the behavior board? Jolanda. Is it Yolanda? Yo, did I say that wrong? Jo Reminds me of the time years and years ago I had this. Uh, it was a, a me. I don't know what it was. Anyway, I had this guy's name written down. And when I got on the phone with them, I called him Jesus. Well, it was Jesus. I didn't know that. How embarrassing. <laughs> he said, thanks. But he said, actually, it's Jesus. How embarrassing. Joe. Oh, hi. Okay, Joe. Can you imagine calling Jesus Jesus? Oh, I never forgot that. That was so human. I don't embarrass easy because I just don't. 
But yeah, that really embarrassed me. I just felt so stupid. I felt so disrespectful, you know, like I should have known that. Anyway. Oh, I just get the shivers thinking about that. How embarrassing. That was a long time ago. Okay. At what age should kids start washing themselves? I tell, tell my five-year-old to wash up and he just sits there. I would just wash them myself. I don't worry about that stuff. Throw them in the shower, hose them down. I might say that. If you don't wash yourself in the tub, I'll shower you down. So, yeah, but don't make it a big deal. Just It's not that big a deal. He's only five years old. Um, but also, get I got a lot of stuff for my kids in the, in the bathtub. Like I used to buy those crayons, soap crayons and all that stuff to make it more fun. The spray spray foam. I remember that as a kid. What was that stuff called? It would like, you build boats out of it. It would just foam that would sit on top of the water. Um, yeah. So just buy, you know, stuff that makes bathing more fun. Okay. My son is two in December and still only says about six words. How can I help him? Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't really want to comment on that. That's the reason is that they develop at all different stages. I've actually known some kids who didn't even talk or walk till they were three. And then they got up and ran and were talking in full sentences. They just sometimes talk at their own pace. If you're really concerned, maybe go to a speech therapist if you're really worried. But yeah, they all develop at such different stages. And I'm not really into accelerated learning. I like them to just learn as they want to. Um, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Now you're thinking, what? But yeah, I won't, don't, don't ask me to go into that unless you're really interested in why I really don't like accelerated learning. I have a lot of reasons for that. It's all experience-based uh, with clients and that, and my own personal view. Okay. At what age should one stop bathing their kids? Uh, I would say usually about seven or eight. I, I think that's when it really kind of, at seven or eight, they're kind of, you know, they're just changing. And I would say around seven and eight, around then. But, um, but then I... Uh, I never had a problem with my kids with bathing, but I've had a lot of clients who had problems with that. So we used to we came up with some funny stuff, especially if it was during summer. We'd say, I'll tell you what, either you shower or we'll strip you down into your Speedo. You go outside and I'll get out the hose, <laughs> a bar of soap, and I'll do it for you. So we just kind of had fun with it. Um, but yeah, give them an ultimatum. But you got to be careful with that stuff because it can come across as bullying and mean. You have to sort of do it a certain way. But yeah, seven or eight, they should be beating themselves, I think. Okay, you got six-year-old twins, boy and a girl, who fight a lot. Yeah, sibling rivalry. Uh, that that actually is in the course to the boot, bus boot busters. Why do I keep calling it boot busters? I want to call it one word, but it's Brat Busters Boot Camp. Anyway, that's in my course up above if you're interested. But anyway. Uh, sibling rivalry. What the, my quick TikTok answer is: separate them. Say, okay, you go to your room. You, if you can't get along, you go to each your rooms. I'll put a timer on for 15 minutes. No, it's not timeout. That's different. You just say, okay, just go in your own separate rooms and play on your own for 15 minutes. Or you can take one kid at a timeout. Okay, so we're going to separate. You come with me for 15 minutes. Put the timer on. Then just chat while you're doing the dishes, and then put them back together. Watch them like a hawk. Next time they start fighting, pull the other one out. So the whole idea behind that is they end up uh, missing each other. So yeah, can't get along, play in separate rooms. If you can't get along, you come with me. And so you keep separating them. Is it work? Yeah. But does it work? Yeah. Most clients say it works really well. But if it's next level, then we do other stuff. So, but that's my quick TikTok answer. Uh, you got a two-year-old who screams and he doesn't get his own way. Yeah, that's right. That sounds normal to me. So yeah, you just got to ignore it. If they don't get their own way, they scream, just ignore it. Even in public, what do I do? Ignore it. It's part of it. It's public humiliation is part of having a toddler. That is part of it. That's part of parenting. Join the club. Whenever I see a mother who's having a, a humiliating experience with a toddler in a supermarket, I always go up to her and I always say, been there. And she goes, oh, thank you. Thank you. You know, because it's just part of having a toddler. You can't avoid it. The only way to avoid it is adopt them out for the first three years and then pull them back in. Like they're, they're just crazy. People understand that. And if people are looking, who cares? Yeah. You want to correct all this natural toddler tendency stuff. Ignoring it is the best way to do it because toddlers lean into what gets what they want, what gets attention. Just don't feed it. 
it's not a matter of correcting it. It's a matter of not giving them what they want. It's, it's the opposite approach. It's that negative discipline, not the pot, not, not negative discipline, but it's the, the um, non-contact way of disciplining. Okay, if they break things during a tantrum, of course you still, you always ignore a tantrum, but you physically restrain them. If they're harming themselves, someone else, or damaging property, you just physically restrain them. You're not looking at them or talking to them. You're just holding their hands or whatever. And so if they go to hit you or something, just hold them and just look like that. Then let go. If they go to hit again, grab them. So physically restrain them, but you keep letting go and then grabbing them again. They'll eventually learn. It's just part of it. Oops, I'm just going to look at my YouTube questions. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you got a four-year-old who's always ripping toys out of the two-year-old's hands. Use my behavior board. It's completely free. It's in the link. Or if you're on YouTube, it's in the description below. And uh, just go in the link. And it is, uh, what was I talking about? Sometimes I forget what I'm talking about. I was just thinking about something else for a second. Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyway, get my free behavior board and put down no taking toys off your siblings, whatever. And then every time he does, then he has to hand, then the, the little one gets to play with his favorite toy for 10 minutes. You're right there. You're, you're, con you're controlling it. You're not allowing him to take that toy away. You're just sitting playing with the two-year-old with his favorite toy, and he has to sit and watch. Every time he grabs a toy, he has to sit and watch. But make it doable. Like, make it sometimes... You know, uh, parents will say, well, he keeps grabbing. And then I'll say, well, something's not adding up for me. Show me the situation. So there'll be all these toys everywhere. And of course, it's not controlled. It's not, it's like you haven't set up a system or an expectation. It, and sometimes if the kids are uh, close in age too, I'll say, what you do is if they have toys they don't want to share, say that's yours. You can only play with that on your bed or something like that. If you want to not share that, that's fine. But you have to play with it over there. So that's what a leader does. A leader sets up systems and expectations, and then you make it happen. So, but yeah, it's a little bit confusing, that one, because there's so many different households that have different setups. So if it's in a playroom and they're not sharing, yeah, that's a bit of a free-for-all. There's going to be fights. Perfectly normal. Toy rotation system, yeah. That, um, with my kids, they didn't have a lot of toys anyway. I'm kind of more of a minimalist. I don't like a lot of stuff. And I don't like clutter or anything. So I had all their stuff put away and they'd only take up five toys at a time. But they always had the big stuff out. I never put books away. Uh, Barbies never got put away. Lego never got put away. But if they wanted to pull out a big thing, like Lego or something, that could stay out for a week. I'll set up in the living room. Um, so we'd set that up. But they couldn't pull out another big thing. And if they didn't keep going to that Lego every day, kind of you know playing with a little bit every day, it got put away. And then whenever they had something messy, like we did a lot of artwork, I made all their Play-Doh and all that stuff. That was all done at the kitchen table. But it was like, a, I sort of ran it like school. Okay, now is Play-Doh time. They couldn't do Play-Doh a little bit, then Lego a little bit, then play with other toys. You know, they couldn't, it just, I didn't operate like that. So I'd say, okay, we're going to have Play-Doh. And it worked beautifully. They integrated into the school system like that because they were used to it. They were used to that. They were used to having to pack up one thing before they went to the next. It was great. You know, so, you know, they were happy kids. They have separate areas to play. I'm just reading your comment here. Um, do toddlers need to share? Good question. That's on YouTube. Do toddlers need to share? No, they don't understand it. A toddler is under three. By three years old, they can learn. But under that, no, they don't understand that because they think they're the only human beings in the world. They don't really understand that they're not the only people in the world. They don't develop empathy until they're three years and nine months old. I have been saying that for like 50 years. Three years and nine months is, the, is that when they develop empathy, they go, oh, I'm not the only one in the world. Other people have wants and needs too. It's like a, sh you can just see it happen. It's like a shift. Anyway, uh, experts always said it was five years. And then they came back and said it was three. And I read about a year ago, they say three years and nine months. I said that I've worked with hundreds of kids. Three years and nine months is when they can actually learn to share out of doing it out of the goodness of their heart, not just having to do it. Um, but will they learn to share? Some may never learn how to share anyway. Oh, you're asking about hitting kids. I don't talk about all that stuff. I do that this too, the slime Play-Doh at the table. God, I wish we'd had slime when my kids were little. I would have loved that. I got grandkids coming along soon. So 
Uh, slime is something I'll definitely be making and, or buying. And then also the kinetic sand. Uh, that's something we didn't have any of that. Okay. Okay, my almost three-year-old loves throwing things. So he's not three yet. I say no and take the item away, but he doesn't care. Advice. Yeah, that's because you're not a leader. Work on your leadership skills. You might want to check out my courses, the Brat Busters Boot Camp. It's, and it's all about you. It's not about the kids. Whenever I'm coaching someone, they say, oh, I get it. It's not about the kids. And I say, no, it has nothing to do with them. You lead, they will follow. You're not correcting them. You're not fixing kids. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just reacting to your parenting. So the whole, the Brat Busters Boot Camp is all about setting you up as a leader. Three to 12 year olds. It's all about you. Everything's about you. They're, I teach parenting. Your children desperately need leaders. If you don't provide it for them, they're going to be very vulnerable out there in the world. If they don't have leaders at home, those are the kids who either bully or are bullied. They're very susceptible to peer pressure or the internet or the Kardashians or the drug dealer on the corner. They're just out there. They're vulnerable. Oh, you're asking about sharing room. I don't know. You know, that really does depend on the kids. Is one of them a loud sleeper and the us? You know what I mean? Like, it just depends. If it works, sure, but it's up to you. That's a, I don't have an opinion on that. My four, almost five-year-old refuses the word no. You can make her look you in the eye. Tell, yeah, that's, again, that's about you. She's just reacting to your lack of leadership. That's all that is. Work on yourself, work on your leadership skills. I've got a free behavior board, which can get you started, or you can buy a course, or you can hire me for coaching. That's the top level. Um, but the course and the, the, the big course, three to 12 year olds, that's very close to coaching, unless you really want that extra nurturing. And, you know, because I mother all my clients, right? If you want all that really specialized care, like with coaching, that's different. But the course teaches you pretty much everything you need to know for all the normal, common stuff. But it's all about you. We're never fixing kids. We are fixing and teaching parents here. You lead, they will follow. I've worked with hundreds of kids. Do you think I ever fixed one single kid? No, I was a good leader and they followed me. They looked up to me and they wanted to please me. And then when I worked with, I mentored troubled teens, they just didn't want to disappoint me. It changes when they're teenagers. You don't want them to want to please you. That's pathetic. You don't want that with teenagers. You want them to have high self-esteem. Be You don't want them to just be obedient little soldiers. And you don't want that with little kids either. You want them to have a say. My kids could tell me anything, and believe me, they did. They never kept the thing to themselves. <laughs> Mom, I didn't like what you did the other day. I thought you were a little bit too tough. Oh, was I? Why? What did I do? Remember you did that? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit tough. Okay, what do you want? So I'd make amends, right? So they negotiated. They were very clever, and they knew how to work me. But they were good kids, so it was very much a negotiating kind of thing from the time they were really little. But with your, if you're not really good at leadership from the time they're really little, when they're teenagers, that negotiating kicks in big time. They want to be their own leaders, and you're passing the torch, but they still don't want to disappoint you. That's your power. They look up to you. They tell you everything. You're a safe place to land right through the teen years. And then they'll turn 18, and you have to say, can you just stop telling me everything? I don't need to know. <laughs> It's just certain stuff I don't need to know. Uh, okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. Check out my latest. I know I did three videos today, and they were all on tantrums because I'm getting uh, – I can't – I won't go into it because you don't care. But anyway, I'm answering more of my comments. I've got a different setup with my app. Um Anyway, so I'm, I'm able to answer more comments now. So they were all about tantrums, tantrum, tantrum, tantrum. So all my three videos today were about tantrums. Um, but anyway, the best one I think to watch is the my favorite tantrum story. That is the swing story. That's the one that completely explains why you ignore a tantrum. And if you don't, what happens? So it explains there's me and my kid and there's another mom and her kid at the park. And it just explains it perfectly. It's a true story. It explains it perfectly why you need to ignore tantrums and the power in this leadership and how my son, even when I put my arm out to prevent him from going back to the swing, how he instantly sat back because he just knew I'm a leader. They just know and it just calms them down. Anyway, uh, her opinion matters too. My kids had a voice uh, very much so. And when I'm working with kids, they have a voice. You want them to be able to tell you everything their opinions on things. And when you're a leader, they're going to be so respectful. Like they're not going to say, I hate you. And you know, that's not what I'm talking about. But they're going to say, 
you know, I think maybe eight o'clock, I'm too old for that now. Can we make bedtime 8.30? And I'd say, yeah, you're right. Sure. Okay. Um, or if they, it was 8.30 and it was their bedtime and they were maybe playing a really good game on the PlayStation, I'd say, ah, keep going. You know, but it's all flexible. When you're, when you're a leader, everything's flexible. They have a say in how their life goes. When you're learning how to get respect, you're learning how to do this leadership stuff. It's not like that. You're learn you want to be the leader. Once you're the leader, you can relax on everything. My kids had a lot of say in how their life went. Like a lot. And they and they knew it that, you know, I had some basic stuff that I, I kind of was in charge of, but the rest of it, they had a huge say in how their life went. That's where you want to go. I don't talk a lot about that because you don't start there. If you're learning how to be a leader, you do not start there. You start with being a leader, like you're more sort of absolutes, like we bedtime is eight o'clock. You know, you know what I mean? Like, and we do this in the morning and that in the morning, but then when they're, they kind of become self-disciplined, you don't even have to worry about it anymore. I have zero memory. I have no memory whatsoever of ever telling my kids to go to bed or ever telling them to do homework. They just knew that's what you do. You go to bed at a certain time or, and you do your homework. So, but yeah, that's the self-discipline that you're after. You want that. So you never have to tell them what to do. You just do it. Uh, I have a quiet 16-year-old and trying to fix our bond. How can I start? Um, okay, they're my favorite age, teenagers. Uh, so, if, And that's coaching. I don't have any course on that. So if you really want my help, my personal help, you can hire me. Otherwise, my best advice, my best advice for raising teenagers is two things. One is you get really good at listening. And you listen to understand and show empathy. You do not listen to gather information to lecture them with. They don't want to hear it. They won't tell you anything. So you just listen to understand and then say, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I went through that too. Or something, you show empathy, right? And then the number two skill with teenagers is you negotiate everything. So you say, okay, this is what I want from you. What do you want from me? You negotiate everything. So it just shows them respect. So that's where you start, listening and negotiating. You want to connect with your teenager. I'm going to tell you one of my favorite stories uh, with teenagers. It was so cute. Uh, this mom had hired me. Her boy was 16. And they had never gotten along. You know, that happens. Just clash. She, I, often they always say it's because you're so much alike. You both have, you know, stubborn usually. It's usually what goes. Anyway, so they'd never really gotten along. Now, they were. he was 16. They just bought him a new car for his 16th birthday. He didn't have his license yet. And the mom took him out every day. Every night after dinner, she took him out for a driving lesson. And they fought like cat and dog. They were just at war. She goes, it almost was, became fist fight. I mean, they were just at each other because she was nagging him the whole time. He's driving, get off my back. And they'd call each other names. It was awful. So anyway, I said, here's what you're going to do. I said, you're going to put on the behavior board, no yelling, because she yells all the time. So I said, no yelling. And most parents do. It's usually their rule. So that your rule is no yelling. The consequence is if you do yell and let it fly, if you feel a yell coming on, don't hold it back, let it fly, because you want to make mistakes. You want to show them how this is done. His, his rule was put uh, dirty clothes in the hamper. You start small with teenagers, but you go big with yourself. So mom's rule, no yelling. If she yells, she could not speak during the next drive, that night during the driving lesson. She was not, unless it was look out for that train or something. So anyway, she said, well, I can't do that. He needs guidance. And I said, well, that's, you know, and I kind of put my arms, I said, that's it. That's what you have to do. So she said, okay. And she was worried about it. She thought, well, there's no way I'm not going to be able to talk. She goes, because she talked, nags him the whole time he's driving. So she put like painter's tape, I think it was, or masking tape over her mouth like this to remind herself not to talk. And she's getting, he didn't see this. And as they're getting into the car, uh, she saw herself in the side view mirror and the, the tape she started laughing. The tape lifted up on the bottom and it was flapping while she was laughing. And her son looked over and saw this and they started giggling. She goes, they've never laughed together before, like not real laughter. And they started giggling the whole ride. She kept this tape and all they did was giggle and laugh the whole time. And then we got to work on a whole bunch of other stuff. But that's how she started connecting with her son. And uh, it was just beautiful. We both cried. It was beautiful. So, um, but yeah, you connect with them uh, in very, I've got a million ideas, but that was just one of them. And lots of parents have done that, by the way. Their driving lesson is a good one that you cannot speak during a driving lesson. If you're not making your kids feel good about themselves, you're missing something. The whole goal with what I teach is you want them to like themselves when they're with you. You want them to feel good about themselves when they're with you. And then when they're not with you, they're going to carry that self-esteem everywhere. That is your goal. Think about this. 
When you're with someone who makes you feel good about yourself, don't you want to please that person? Or at the very minimum, you're never going to be rude to that person. The person who makes you feel great about yourself, you want to please, or you certainly don't want to disappoint. Think about that. That's what I teach. It's that when they like themselves, when they're with you, they want to please you. The pool story says that the best. Um, because I do deal with bad behavior, but then I focus on the good kid. My goal is always to make them like themselves when they're with me. That's my power. That was my superpower when I was mentoring troubled teens, is they liked themselves when they were with me. So that gave me a lot of power. You gotta be careful with that, because they you look at them the wrong way. They're like, well, you know, they're, um, they're very, very hypersensitive uh, when they're in crisis. So, but anyway, think about that. Do you make your kids feel good about themselves? That's your goal. Do you have a podcast? No, I got a whole bunch of stuff coming up. Um, I've been really busy. I'll be honest. I went on TikTok about a year and a half ago, and I blew up overnight. Everything changed for me after that. I had to change a whole bunch of stuff. So I just don't have a lot of time. Uh, but I do have plans. I've got some help now, so I have plans. And I'd like to do a podcast. But you know what I want to do? Uh, my strength is talking, like video. I like video. Um, and I, my, coaching is my favorite thing because I get to see people. And I, I love, this is my second favorite thing. I can't see you. I miss, I want to be able to see you guys. But I would love to interview, have a split screen and, on, and interview clients. Like, well, they wouldn't be paying me, but it would be like just interviewing parents. And we would do like a therapy session, not therapy, a coaching session. And it would be all live. Like that would be a podcast, but it would be videoed and let, and on YouTube as a video. But that's my, is that something that sounds interesting? That's sort of what I always sort of had in mind, but I wanted to do. I always wanted to coach people live, um, have it all set up, and then uh, people can watch that. And because then you can see you're not alone. You see these, and you should see my clients. I mean, they are not losers. They are successful winners. They know what they're doing. And then they get these kids and they say, I just fell apart. You know, these, and they're teachers, principals, child psychologists, huge heads of corporations, really highly successful people, but they still struggle with parenting. That's what I want you to see. I want you to see you're not alone. You know, people who are struggling with parenting, they're not losers. They've just got kids. Parenting is personal. It's not like anything else. Not like any other relationship. Who else would you throw yourself on a fire for? I mean, you wouldn't even think, would you? You know, it's different. But anyway, I would love to do that. That's my dream. But geez, Lou, just the thought of trying to get that going. Maybe next year, um, 2024, maybe. Halfway through, maybe. Ugh, I would love that. God, I always wanted to do that. You know, long before podcasts were out or anything, I always thought, geez, I'd love to do live coaching. So you, So everyone else could see what these parents are like and what they're going through and the results they get. Okay. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll do maybe two or three more questions and then I got to get going. I'll just do my wrap up right now though. If you go in the link above, you can hire me for coaching, buy one of my courses or download my free behavior board. You're on that too. That's what makes it work. Uh, all my videos today, geez, I looked horrible last night. I did these three videos yesterday and I was so tired. I was just about to go to bed and then I decided to do some videos. <laughs> I look like death. Anyway, it's funny. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You could do podcasts that you take callers, video chats. Um, coaching, yeah, I could, but coaching is different. I get to I get to know the person. I, I it takes me just a few minutes I, to sort of figure out where I want to take them. And how I, well, I always know where I want to take you. I want you to be a leader, but how I go about that, every family's different. So I kind of want to get to know, I think people will write in and sort of apply. And then I think that's how I'll do it. Um, and I don't want people just coming on that are ex clients talking about their success either, because then that's sort of almost frustrating for people watching. Yeah, you know, uh, I want them to see people going through it. That, that's my idea. Well, what's your opinion on location tracking apps? Well, my daughter and I do that all the time. We always know where the other one is because we live nearby and we're always, oh, you're there. I'll meet you there in two minutes or whatever. So we do that. Um, but yeah, with your kids, that is a bit of a hot potato. It depends on the situation. But yeah, lots of times I do recommend that. Yeah, but it depends. 
okay, on the age and what's going on and your relationship. You don't start with that. You usually start with other stuff and then you can move into that sort of stuff. But yeah, I'm all for it. Um, yeah. Okay. My son is five and he has just recently started lying and not telling the truth because I am a strict mom. Um, I know what I want to say, but uh, uh, just a sec. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Be tactful, Lisa. Um, uh, uh, how do I put this? He's lying because he's lying because he doesn't trust you. It's not because you're a strict mom. It's because he doesn't trust you. Um, if, if you're saying it's because you're a strict mom, there's lots of different reasons for lying. It's not always the way, but, but that's a tell for me. If he lies because you're a strict mom, it means he doesn't trust you. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I don't wanna go on about that because that could take, that would be at least a three or four minute rant. Um, just trying to explain myself, but yeah. Um, if you want my help, you can hire me. That might just be one session for me to explain exactly what I mean and also to assess to make sure I'm right about that. I think I am now. Um, okay, I'll do one more question. Okay, I feel like it's chaos at home when the kids are playing, they just run around like lunatics uh, four and two. And the problem, yeah. I was actually, the, I would say I was the craziest one in our house. I was the loudest and the craziest. So yeah, I think there's nothing wrong with loud fun. Um, yeah, if they're loud, like there was never any loud anger in our house, but there was definitely loud fun. So yeah, if they're having fun, is there anything wrong with that? You know, um, yeah, unless you're worried about damaging stuff or whatever, that's a bit different. But yeah, I was probably the loudest one in our house. Um, anyway. Okay, I'm going to get going now, um, and I just want to leave with the thought that uh, your whole goal with parenting is to make your kids feel good about themselves. And if they're acting out, they never do. Kids who are acting out and misbehaving and being disrespectful feel like garbage about themselves. Their self-esteem is in the toilet, guaranteed, 100%. So you want them to feel good about themselves. You want them to like themselves and be proud of themselves. That is your goal as a leader, and you also want to be friends with your kids. Okay, I got to go. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll be back again on a regularly scheduled one on Saturday. I usually turn up every day. I never know when. just depends on when, I, when I'm able to. So thanks very much. Check out my courses and uh, my free behavior board, and also you can hire me for coaching. It's on the link above. Take care. Bye now.